r slash ask reddit deleted by user when my niece was about four she was terrified of monsters under her bed under the couch in her wardrobe open bracket inexplicably in the toilet her mother made her up a little spray bottle labeled monster spray and filled it with water the finest monster repellent money can buy now she can get rid of monsters anytime she likes two quick spritzes and they won't come anywhere near her this obviously has nothing to do with placebos because monster repellent is legit i just wanted to share my brother hung a no dinos allowed sign on his daughter's bedroom door after they both had nightmares about being eaten by a t-rex. Turns out t-rexes who eat little girls are very respectful of the rules and obey all posted signs. Also, one of my friends painted her kids closet doors purple. Because everyone knows closet monsters are allergic to purple. Edit. Guys. I don't know how to tell you this. But T-Rexes are extinct. They don't exist in the real world and they don't actually present a tangible threat outside of nightmares. Gunmen do. Please stop with the snide gun free zone comments. The monster spray bottle is purple for this very reason. Your friend is plainly well educated in monsterology. My son was an army medic. Sometimes soldiers would complain about aches and pains. But he knew there wasn't really anything wrong. Worry. Boredom. Homesickness anxiety often comes through as physical symptoms. He still wanted to help. So he would give them plain old aspirin. He'd put a few tablets into a little envelope and casually warn them that the medication was pretty strong. He'd tell them to take it exactly as directed. He said it was amazing how often a guy would come find him and say, Doc, those pills you gave me worked. Pain is gone and I slept like a log. There's nothing fake about a placebo. It's a very useful medical tool. There's a scene in the movie The Birdcage where Nathan Lane is in hysterics and begs his assistant for more pirin tablets to calm down. The assistant tells Nathan's partner not to worry because they're just aspirin with the A and S scratched off. Yes, I was going to comment the same thing. I love it. What the hell are you giving him? What are pirin tablets? Double quote. It's just a aspirin with the A and S scraped off. When my daughter was very young I had to leave for work for a couple of years, only coming back once a month. My daughter started to have nightmares so I bought a teddy bear that I gave her and told her he would keep the nightmares away. Years later she asked me why it worked. Because you believe me. Edit. Work. Not fork. Yep. My mom told me the pokey ceiling in my bedroom. It was texture. Would keep monsters away because they would bonk their heads on it hurt them. I was like duh of course they would and never worried about monsters again. I shared a room with my younger brother when I would stay at my dad's on the weekends. He lived in the woods and I was 100% sure werewolves were real. We got a bunk bed and I got the top. Dad said not to worry about the werewolves anymore because if they came in, they would eat my brother and be too full to eat me. I slept so well after that. Clicking random buttons during the poke ball catching animation. It only works if you press A. Down plus B as soon as the poke ball closes. The harder you press the buttons, the better your chances of success. Your blanket covering your legs yourself from a serial killer at night. Hey screw you man that does too work. Edit. My highest rated comment is about me being a chicken shit. Edit 2. I'm really glad none of you have died been murdered. Haha <laughs> remember not to let your legs hang out. To a certain extent, alcohol, many of the behaviors associated with drinking, aside from direct physical effects, come about through learned behavior, environment, and cultural conditioning. There have been hundreds of studies where college students are unknowingly given non-alcoholic beer in a bar-like setting, yet after a few they behave like they are buzzed. However, that doesn't happen when given non-alcoholic beer in a classroom setting. I noticed this when I didn't drink. I went a solid 2 months sober and would be my friend's designated driver. I'd still hang and drink water. Or if the bartender was nice they'd give me soda. And just hang. But I'd still like. Feel that drunk feeling in a way. Read up on this. Oddly happy. Oddly happy you seem to be in a good mood right now. Are you drunk? Products claiming to detoxify your body. No. Your organs flush most things out the system itself. Here, drink these juices that make you shit water for a week. We'll be totally detoxed after. 
Okay to be fair I had to do a colonoscopy prep a few months back and while by the end I was massively dehydrated and fatigued. For a few hours I was like damn. I've never felt this light and clean and not bloated. I guess those insta models are onto something here. Edit. I should have known I was going to get a ton of well intended suggestions but my stomach issues are seemingly due to endometriosis having grown on my colon at one point. It's been removed. And apparently the birth control I was on. I'm as regular as I could hope for since stopping it. Thanks. Edit edit. Yes please feel free to PM me if you have questions about endometriosis or IBS or anything. I am obviously very open about this stuff. The best way to not be embarrassed by having pooping issues is to just be open about your pooping issues. Group hug. Last edit. I am not in any way seriously condoning detoxes. Please don't drink 3 pints of laxative if you're not having a colonoscopy. Detox isn't real, but horrible diarrhea is. If you have issues with bloating and constipation please discuss it with your doctor. Abusing certain types of laxatives can cause a dependence and you can make yourself really sick with dehydration. Worked at a camp the infirmary would give campers homesick medicine. Pretty much Gatorade and sugar. That stuff worked wonders. Some parent blew up and thought we were lying and brainwashing kids so they got rid of it. I can see exactly how this goes down. Parents. I can't believe you would give my child medicine without my permission camp. It's sugar water parents. Feeling stupid. But refusing to swallow their outrage. How dare you deceive my child. Same parents. Kids these days are helpless and entitled. I am not a big audio geek but I have been sitting in and assisting with running sound at my local church. I am learning a lot. One of the guys who knows a ton about soundboards was telling me that the band members are notorious for complaining about imaginary things. When this happens, he grabs an inactivated knob on the soundboard and stares at the guy in the eyes as he moves the knob. 95% of the time. When he asks if it is better, they will say yes and won't complain about it again. As a musician when I don't like the way something sounds and ask the sound man to fix it I usually just stare at him and wonder why it's not sounding any different while he's moving knobs. Then I'll just be like yeah you fixed it. Because I don't want to look like an amateur who can't hear the difference haha. -ha. It's the equivalent of saying yeah haha when you can't hear someone and you already asked what was that with three times. Balance bracelets. The power of magnets. Or bullshit we can't be sure. The theory behind them is that the magnets do something to the iron in your blood and gives you benefits. While extremely powerful magnets can affect your blood, the ones in the scam bracelets are magnitudes too weak to ever have any effect at all. They are just stylish stupid jewelry for old people. He. S. If you liked my use of affect versus effect and I did it correctly then it was pure luck. Cause I don't know how to use those effectively. The kiss you give a kid after they get hurt. I mean most people know it does nothing but few realize it actually works due to the placebo effect. Edit. As people have pointed out there is more at play with this than just the placebo effect. But thanks reddit for the free education. Colon. Actually it's the power of love. I mean that shit saved Harry Potter. I'm not sure that this is entirely a placebo effect. But I feel like the entire anti-MSG propaganda is based on a lot of placebo effects. As an example, my father-in-law is absolutely convinced that he can tell when a restaurant uses message and that we must avoid them at all costs because he gets very ill when he eats message. He supposedly gets severe headaches and doesn't feel well for an entire day any time he eats at a restaurant that uses message. Meanwhile, he eats instant ramen several times a week which is loaded with message and yet he feels absolutely fine. I've yet to point this out to him because he is not the kind of person to learn something then realize the mistake. So it's not like he'll be like oh. I guess I've been eating message this whole time and I've been fine. I guess message isn't entirely bad but rather all of a sudden realize that the next time he eats instant ramen he'll feel sick because he's now aware it contains message. So yay. I'm gonna say message. And the resulting negative effects is simply the result of eating higher levels of sodium. I'm not a nutritionist and don't have any scientific data to prove that message has negative placebo effects but I do feel anecdotally I've seen plenty of people succumb to this. Edit. Lots of people have kindly pointed out that this is an example of a nocebo effect, not a placebo effect. I can usually tell when there's message in food because that food will, more often than not, taste delicious. 
It's also in foods like tomatoes and parmesan. People with message issues magically don't seem to have problems with tomatoes. Only Chinese food. When I was about 6 or 7 years old I woke up in the middle of the night to a giant daddy long legs on the wall right above my head. I ran out of the room absolutely terrified and told my mom I would never sleep in there again because the spiders were going to crawl all over me as soon as I fell asleep. I guess after 2 nights of sleeping on couch cushions beside my parents bed, they had had enough and decided to figure something out. They went out and bought special spider spray that would keep all of the spiders away. There was a tiny little hole in the drywall at the top corner of the ceiling. And I told them that's where they were getting in and they had to spray there. So my mom sprayed the spider spray in the hole and plugged it with tissue paper. And then sprayed all over my room. I remember it smelled really sweet and my mom said it was because spiders hate sweets. Then after was satisfied with the level of spider prevention. My mom put the can under the sink in my bathroom and it was long in about. Fast forward 12 years later. I've moved out and my parents are redoing that bathroom. They asked me to come over and grab any stuff I still wanted. I'm rummaging through and I pull out an air freshener can with little holographic Halloween spider stickers all over it. My mom starts laughing and tells me that that was my special spider spray. I was completely floored ha ha ha. I had actually never caught on. I thought it was genuinely spider spray when my mom had used it. And now I was looking at a glade can with Halloween stickers all over it. Wasn't even convincing at all. But it totally did the job ha ha ha. Just made me realize how gullible kids can be. Your mom is awesome. Herbalife and similar products. The people I know who talk about how great it is don't understand the real reason they are losing weight and feeling better is because they completely change their diets and eating habits. If you replace an unhealthy meal with a shake what you're really doing is cutting out calories. This is what's making you lose weight. Not any magic stuff in those shakes. My mom likes to talk about a weight loss cream she saw in the 70s where you would put it on the area you want to lose fat from. Belly. Thighs. Wherever. Then to activate the cream you go for a 5 mile run. Edit. This one comment now has more karma than my previous 4 years combined. Thanks mom. Mio. It's hilarious that some people would go for a run to activate a cream but say no to going on a run if directly told that running is a good choice. Remember that annoying commercial for that headache stick you rolled on your head? They would say head on. Apply directly to the forehead 3x in a row? Yeah I guess the stuff is just homeopathic aka a placebo. Head on. Which you apply directly to your forehead. Is literally just wax. No active ingredients. If you pay attention to the commercials, they never actually say it does anything. Because they legally couldn't. Radio waves. Normal frequency. Causing illnesses. There was a radio tower put somewhere near people's houses. When they started complaining about headaches, fevers and other symptoms. The reaction from the company running the tower? Just wait until we turn the thing on. Edit. Bad grammar colon edit too. Yes. It's an acebo. I know by now. Upvote the comments that say so instead of commenting it yourself. Please. Preemptive thanks. Same with wind farm syndrome or whatever it is called. I'm so ducking fed up with that shit. People beach and moan about the importance of renewable energy and then get all up in arms when those alternative energy sources affect them in any way. Choose cleanses first of all. You aren't cleansing anything. Additionally, of course you are going to feel better after not eating for a weekend. Drinking sugar water doesn't do your body any favors either. But it's been 3 days since your body has gotten much needed calories. Eating anything is going to make you feel amazing after that nonsense. Any sort of cleanse. You do not need to detoxify your body. Your kidneys and liver do a great job of that. If you really had so many toxins in your body, you would be deathly ill and in need of hospitalization. You do not have 2 10 pounds of toxic sludge. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Chilling in your intestines making you sick. You probably do have a few pounds of food at various stages of digestion. But this is normal and healthy. Digestion is a process that takes time. So if your undigested food moves right along and didn't spend any time sitting in your digestive tract, your body wouldn't have the chance to extract the energy and nutrients locked in that food. Constantly shitting your brains out, like a cleanse makes you do, is not healthy. If you're having regular bowel movements, your digestive system is working fine. 
If you really do have pounds and pounds of toxic sludge stuck in your intestines, then you should see a doctor ASAP because you likely have a bowel obstruction. Man I once had pounds of toxic sludge. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. In me. Didn't poop for a week. Finally got frustrated and bought a bottle of magnesium citrate. Chugged the whole thing down and started the waiting game. It gave me some serious bubble gut. It really made my insides go from stagnant. To a gentle simmer. To a full on boil in maybe half an hour. And it just didn't stop for hours. I knew relief was only a matter of time away. But you see. I'm not very smart. The bottle said allow 6-12 hours. I took it 7am on a Sunday. Figured I could inconsequentially spend my day on the toilet. 1pm rolled around. And though I could feel something cooking. I didn't feel anything priming. 7pm rolled around. Still lots of bubbling but no progress. Midnight rolled around and I finally just said duck it I'll probably end up shitting my entire bed in my sleep. But I have to work in the morning. Alarm goes off at 6am. I felt. And more horrifyingly. Looked pregnant. Still no poop. That's when I knew something was wrong. But I had a busy day of work ahead of me and I figured I'll get it checked at lunch. Made it to lunch work at 7. Opened up my laptop. Closed my laptop. It arrived. And it was not willing to wait. I duck waddled to the bathroom. Saw someone was in one of the stalls. Apologized to him. And let loose the first of what would be many installments of pneumatically propelled toxic sludge. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Got cleaned up. Walked past my boss's desk. Informed him I'd be working from home. And left without grabbing my laptop. If you've never pooped several pounds of toxic sludge. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Radioactive sign. Out in a day. I'd recommend avoiding such a situation. It was not fun. A broken marriage. But flex tape is still more effective. That's a lot of dask me anything ge. To show you the power of flex tape. I saw this marriage in half. There's good evidence most over the counter cough medication is no better than a placebo. HTTPS colon slash slash www b nlm nit gov pmc articles pmc 1,325,161 slash edit. Since this statement is doing numbers I thought it would be better to clarify and explain in more detail. To being with. Here are more studies going into more depth about the effectiveness of cough medication in treating acute cough. A review of 6 trials involving 438 children found OTC cough medicines do not appear more effective than placebo in relieving symptoms of acute cough. HTTPS colon slash slash www b nlm nit gov pub slash 11,861,232 in probably the largest review. Looking at 29 different scientific trials involving 4,835 people, the investigators could not find any evidence that OTC cough medication was effective at reducing acute cough. HTTPS colon slash slash www b nlm Nit Gov Pub Med Health PMH 0011214 slash a review of the pediatric literature also raised the fact that none of the major trials found OTC cough medications had any discernible effect other than as a placebo. It even questions whether physicians should recommend them to children. HTTPS colon slash slash www b nlm Nit Gov PMC articles PMC 2,573,971 slash another study looking at the fact that it's the texture of most OTC syrups, a sweet viscous liquid that provides most of the relief in acute cough. HTTPS colon slash slash www b nlm Nit Gov Pub slash 16,326,149 That being said however it doesn't mean necessarily that people shouldn't take them. I take them. The placebo effect is not a harmful effect and there's no reason to avoid it. If it brings relief it brings relief. People should just be aware that the evidence for the active ingredients, the ones that are marketed by the companies that make them, doing anything is just not there. There's evidence that a placebo works even if you know it's a placebo. The bias placebo. It's a very simple concept where someone allows a certain bias, as in an idea, 
create a placebo effect. For example you may have a bias that fish tastes nasty even if you have never tried it. So when you finally do, the placebo effect kicks in and ruins it. This is very common and comes in many forms. It's always self-inflicted and is easily fixed. It's so common that people can have this happen nearly day to day depending upon the bias and not even know it. Out of curiosity, how is it easily fixed especially if it's so cognitively engraved? Because I feel like it'd be cool to try food I think I strongly dislike. Best way to get past this is to be mindful of the food you are eating. Focus on the texture, the flavor, the colors, everything. Take your time eating it and think about what you are experiencing as you do. Mindfulness is a very powerful tool. I'm not sure if it's technically a placebo, but smoking to help with a hectic situation. Your body is using a cigarette or vape as a tool to force you to take long breaths. Hold them in, then exhale slowly. After a few hits you feel much better and calmer, partly due to that sweet sweet nicotine but partly due to the physical response of your body slowing down for a minute and taking some deep breaths while focusing on something other than the issue at hand. This just blew my mind. I never thought of it this way before. And because the nicotine causes the release of a lot of dopamine in your brain so it's not really a placebo but actually can make you feel better. My little sister thinks she's high off a rocker all the time because she vapes CBD oil. Huffing essential oils for ailments. Homeopathy. Do you know why homeopathy doesn't work? Because if it did, it would be called medicine. Oh, herbal medicine has been around for thousands of years. Indeed it has. And then we tested it all. And the stuff that worked became medicine. And the rest of it is just a nice bowl of soup and some potpourri. Semicolon Dara Obrien. Well I don't know what a placebo is, but this guy on the street sold me these orange pills that have cured practically everything that ails me. They also taste like orange tic tacs. Yum. Edit. I think I've learned more about recreational drugs from this thread than high school health class. So, thanks. A placebo is either that one organ thing pregnant women have or it's that wooden thing where people like to get married. Boobs church. Anyone else puzzled by the way we downplay placebo effect? It's just a placebo effect, so in medicine, that means some people actually just believe themselves into feeling better comparatively to the test group who actually got medicine. Feels like unfinished research. Reddit karma. You're like a rich person, on reddit, that says money ain't a thing. 185, 9k karma, 00. zero. Sugar hyperactivity. From what I have read, it does nothing to make someone hyper but parents tell their kids it will make them hyper so when the kids do eat sugar they act hyperactive. A majority of studies show no link between sugar intake and hyperactivity. Link, https colon slash slash, www, webbed, comparenting features busting sugar hyperactivity myth. I'd heard that kids get out of control at birthday parties because of the setting, not because of cake and ice cream. Although caffeine does cause hyperactivity, so if a kid is drinking soda at a party that will also be a contributing factor, especially if the kid rarely has access to caffeine. I'll heal us bum us all heal us bum you see have spent much of my time working with kids on overnight camps. I have occupied many roles. But because I keep my credentials up to date, I'm always one of the grown ups who is on first aid duty. While the first rule of first aid is take it seriously, when a kid is limping because their group is due to hike up a mountain tomorrow, Alhelas Barmas works a charm. Other situations it works in. Kid is crying because they got hit by a ball during games, or are homesick so have a sore tummy. It is aqueous cream with a small amount of eucalyptus essential oil. Which is a warming effect and makes it smell medicinal. And it works beautifully. Because of the take everything seriously rule. You do rule out if there is a dangerous injury before you pull out the alhelas. But since we are so super serious throughout. The kids truly believe they are getting proper medicine. Typically you have the kid in the office. Having ruled out the possibility of hospital. Doctor or camp nurse. And it's definitely an alhelas job. You very seriously tell the kid you have a strong cream that will help make them feel better. You pull out the alhelas, which you need to keep in an official looking tub to keep up the appearance. Put on latex gloves and then rub it into the sore place. Of course, 
Rubbing anything that is sore makes it feel a bit better. But at this point, the kid probably needs attention and a bit of feeling special. And like they are being taken seriously. Then, once you've rubbed it all in, you look at your watch and say now. You should start feeling the effect in exactly 2 minutes. You explain that the powerful cream needs to be activated by the air. The eucalyptus oil's thermal properties are helped by airflow. So you need to move around to get new air around it. 90% of the time, the kid is back up and running around with friends in no time at all. The other 10% probably need a hug. A sugar rush. Been eating sugar all my life. Never had one of those. Edit. Guys. I get it. Just my experience. Thoughts and prayers. Nap placebo is more effective. Elevator close doors buttons edit. A lot of people are saying they've used elevators where the buttons do work. But the majority of them just have buttons that are work as a placebo and make people feel they are in control. This article helps. HTTPS colon slash slash www telegraph company arc science the 2nd of november 2016 closed door buttons do work in british lifts but not in a celevato whoa you made it to the end you're a ducking beast i'll cut you a deal smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh it's free and that's a great price